Hey, everybody. So I have somebody extremely special today, and they are legendary and one of my favorite people ever, Mr. Jabari Davis, Juice, Gator Killer, and <laughs> a.k.a. Pablo. Pablo. That's me this weekend. That's what I'm going by. <laughs> and Pablo. why? Because we have, me and my business partner, we have packaged out over a thousand cigars to Vol Nation over the last five days. It has been incredible uh, with the support, with the planning, with the pre-gaming for this weekend. Um, you know, Tennessee, Alabama has always been a cigar-themed game over the last 40, 50 years. Um, it originally started with Alabama uh, celebrating their first victory, I think, in 1961. And their equipment manager uh, had victory cigars for the whole team and, you know, for the coaches and, and managers and trainers and things like that. So that's how the whole thing started. And every year, the team that wins that game is usually one that's lighting it up on the sideline on the field. And um, as a as a as a former player, that was something that I experienced three times. And unfortunately, we haven't experienced that since 2006. But it's something different in the air right now. You know, I'm excited about this weekend for the first time in years going into Bama. I can actually say we want Bama, you know, and uh -huh. feel confident about it because I know I got a football coach that's going to bring it. I got a football team that's going to bring it. And we got a quarterback that's one of the best quarterbacks we've had in the last 25 years that is on his way to be a Heisman front runner and being one of the best that have ever uh, put on that orange and white uniform. So I'm very confident this weekend. I'm excited. It's going to be an incredible atmosphere. Uh, Vol Nation again is going to show up and show out. And uh, I got a strong feeling that we're going to be lighting some cigars all night, partying all night, drinking all night, and cap off this weekend with a lot of great memories. So, uh, so a lot it. of people don't, they don't understand this. They don't understand how special it is to be a vol and what the difference is. So originally you're from Georgia, correct? Yes, ma'am. So why is it so like, what makes being a vol so special to you? Uh, you know, me growing up in the state of Georgia, um, a very, you know, I, I, knew, I, mean, well, I, I knew little of Tennessee until about my sophomore year. I mean, I was, you know, growing up watching Georgia Bulldogs, watching Georgia Tech. Um, you know, my room was red and black when I was younger. But things change when you start going on recruiting trips and watching college football and starting to fall in love with the game. And, um, you know, when I came to Tennessee on, for a camp in 1998, you know, saw the magnitude of the university and the stadium and the tradition, fell in love with it. And I said, Hey, have I ever got an opportunity to get recruited by these guys? I'm going to take a serious look. So when they offered me a scholarship, um, going into my senior year, I actually came to the Tennessee Alabama game in 2000. That was my first game that I came to. And, um, it felt like I was already a part of the team. You know, the fans embraced me. They knew my name. They knew my family's name. They knew my coach's name. They knew everything about me. And that played a huge part in me committing. And um, ever since I've had that moment, you know, Tennessee has always been in my heart. Um, even as a former player now, you know, moving back to Tennessee in 2011 to finish school, raise a family, and, um, you know, start a business and things like that. So being a Tennessee volunteer is something that's special and something that will always be one of the greatest moments in high life of my life. I mean, something that's special to me about being a Vol fan is that it really is from coaches to players to previous players to fans. It's like one big family and it people is. don't understand. Uh, I mean, other fan bases, they have that, but it's it's so much different because we're loyal and we, you know, we stick Super together loyal. through everything, even the ups and the downs. And it never like it never changes anything or that love and that passion behind it. And I think that's why people are like, uh, there's like a misconception. They're like, Oh my God, you guys are crazy on ball Twitter. And, and we are, <laughs> but it's because we love our balls. Yeah. We love each other. You know, it's really cool. It's something that's really special. 
But what's also really special about you is that you have the Legends of Tennessee, right? Which is the camps yes, and stuff. Well, Legends of Tennessee is a 501c3 nonprofit that um, I started in 2018. And my vice president uh, of the organization, Chris Trees, who played in the late 80s. And uh, we were around town and hanging out, going to tailgates and uh, start running into a lot of guys that were here locally. And I said, man, you know what? Why don't we start making a difference in the community yes. and start teaching these kids the greatness of Tennessee football? Of course, over the last 15 years, there's been a lot of ups and downs with Tennessee football, a lot of losing seasons, a lot of stressful years uh, that we didn't, you know, that during our days, we didn't experience that because we were at Tennessee when we were the most feared team in college football. And, uh, you know, we needed to educate the kids on the greatness of Tennessee because everything that you looked on TV was, you know, or looked on social media was something negative. And when I see a kid born and raised in Knoxville, Tennessee with a Clemson shirt on or with an Oregon shirt on, I'm like, man, mm -hmm. if you don't take that off and put on some orange or white. So we wanted to uh, just spread the knowledge and the wisdom that we had on the game of football and how to play it the right way not only football, but how to be a great student in the classroom, teaching them the principles of uh, manhood, you know, how to have great character in the community, understand that, you know, I need to dream big and work hard and never give up. And also, uh, you know, something that we added this year was our youth mental health program called The Huddle, which we go around the schools and we speak to kids about social media safety, bullying, depression, anxiety, suicide prevention, all those great things. And, you know, we do a lot of other community work. So as a former player, I take pride in making an impact on the kids that are, you know, coming up next. And if we want to change our future, then we got to uh, start, you know, speaking to these kids and having these conversations so they can open up and we can coach them and guide them and inspire them to do great things in life. So that's what the Legends of Tennessee organization is all about football is just a small part of our mission but we do so much more uh to help change lives and save lives that is so important and i mean that's again everybody that is the wonderful thing about being a vol is there's so much more that goes into the love of tennessee but i actually have something here that came in the mail today i have your cigars, cigars yeah and I need a like lesson because <laughs> after the Florida game, um, we lit one up with Jermaine <laughs> and it was, yes, with JK. And I was like, I, I, I inhaled. Yeah. There's some you never do. And so, I'm like, <laughs> so the reason we started the cigars, you know, if any listeners know anything about nonprofit organizations, you know, we have to fundraise our success is based on the community support, donations, fundraisers, and Vol Nation has done an amazing job over the last couple of years. We do huge fundraisers uh, all the time, VFL socials, we sell a lot of apparel. And um, we started the cigar stuff about three years ago. Our biggest fundraiser event is called Sips and Cigars. And it's in the, toward the end of February, um, of, you know, every year, well, over the last four years. And uh, that fundraiser helps give us a jump start to go into these cities and making sure we have everything financially to run a successful camp, traveling arrangements, football equipment, food, t shirts, apparel, uh, scholarshiping, uh, a lot of the families and mothers and fathers that need support to get their kids into camp and also giving back. Every city that we go to, we try to give $1,000 back to that community to help keep kids off the streets and keep them in cleats. So, uh, you know, since cigars were one of our biggest fundraisers, we wanted to do something different this season and just, you know, so people can have access to them during some big games. So, um, you know, we got with a company um, out of Miami that has different connections to different tobacco farms in Nicaragua and uh, oh, wow. labels, you know, anytime you're dealing with cigars, Nicaragua and Cuba are like the two uh, big time countries that hold the, you know, the most elite premium 
quality stick. So we wanted to get something quality for the people, make it orange and white, put the VFL logo on it, make it stand out. Um, and, you know, anytime you're smoking, uh, smoking cigars, it's always celebrating a big moment, uh, a big game, a graduation, a birthday party, a wedding, uh, childbirth, anything like that. So uh, the key to smoking a cigar and having a good experience with it is just, like you said, make sure that it's a great moment first. Yes. Um, and when you smoke it, make sure that you smell the leaf. So okay. Kind of see what type of aroma that you're getting. With our cigars, we have a um, Habano, which is like a medium um, smoke, something, you know, too, not, not really that strong. And we have the Maduros, which is a stronger, which is a darker leaf. And with me, I have the Maduros. I don't know if you have the Maduros or you have the Habano. So when you take them out, I'm gonna, you know, you open them up. Okay. You know, take the silicone off of them. Then you want to cut it right at the cap at the top. So you want to have a good, nice cut. Please go get you a cigar cutter. <laughs> uh, you can also punch it. You know, you can drill a little hole in the middle of it. They have those at okay. cigar shops as well. And when you, you know, get ready to light it, make sure that you have your lighter about one to two inches away from the bottom of the cigar. So you don't want to burn the whole stick up. You want to toast it a little bit. Okay. So you want to, you know, move it in a circular a, uh, motion, toast it for a little bit. Then you put your lips on it. Then you want to pull on it about two or three times. And you, you want to, what what I do is a, is a, is a technique called retrohaling, where you inhale some of the smoke about, right here like halfway throat. then you let it out and you also let it out through your nose as well so you get some different flavors when you retro hell so don't just blow the smoke out of your mouth if you really want the joy <laughs> if you really want to enjoy the different flavors of the cigar and these and and in our cigars if you looked on the website you get a lot of different coffee notes some yes leather, some cream a little bit of spice and things like that. If you retro hell, you can really appreciate a lot of those notes that come through your nasal passages. So, you know, don't inhale it all the way like some people do with cigarettes or weed, any other type of <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> thing that you smoke. It. Just, hey, just a little bit until it gets to the throat. Okay. Let it out. And then, like, savor the aroma, yeah. right? Savor You're supposed the aroma. to savor it. Yeah, in your palate. Let it out through your nose, close your eyes, and you can really get a lot of different flavors from the stick. And take your time. I put on that uh, on that post I put out yesterday on Twitter. We we will see a lot of people getting uh, <laughs> getting high this I'm weekend off drinking too much whiskey and bourbon and oh, smoking boy. too many cigars. So take your time. When you're smoking cigars and drinking alcohol, don't try to get crazy with it. I know it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. College game day will be back. Friends and family will be in town. And, you know, it's going to be rocking. But pace yourself. You know, smoke half of the cigar. Drink some water. Make sure you eat water. something. <laughs> make sure you eat something before you start smoking. Do not smoke and drink on an empty stomach. Like, I don't want to be seeing people falling all over we outside needless Teddy looking like the damn walking dead <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> i know jk yeah, so, was like sarah we gotta get you some food and i was yeah, like make yeah make sure, sure you eat good <laughs> and take your time like i said hey socialize smoke drink you know save it for a little bit take some time away from it but just enjoy yourself it's gonna be a great weekend so you, you do think i mean you think we're gonna be smoking these I really do think I feel something different in the air right now. I do too. Uh, like I said, I've been more confident this week than I have the Florida week. You know, Florida week was always a big question mark. And with this game, this is just a statement to the country that we are yes. officially back, that we are the team from the 90s, from the early 2000s. We are going to be coming in with full force. You need to fear that power, T. You know, anytime you get to beat uh, 
Goliath and hit him in the mouth, then pick mm -hmm. him up again, hit him in the mouth, and hit him in the mouth <laughs> and make that statement. That does a different thing. It's like for that your video. Swagger. Yeah, you know, you, for your you posted. Swagger. What'd you say? I said that video you posted on Twitter where um, it was like, if I get in the game, I'm going <laughs> to knock somebody out. What did oh, you yeah, say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's how you got to play, you know. Alabama should – I mean, Alabama should have two losses right now. They barely beat a and yes. A&M could have easily beat them by two or three touchdowns if they would have caught the ball and played better defense. Texas should have beat them. You know, you're looking at a, a good football team, not a great football team, you know. I agree. And even though we have guys that are injured and we have the – you know, the guy that may not be playing or starting safety with the, you know, incident that happened over the weekend, which is a crazy incident. But he's practicing, right? But Yeah, he, you know, he is practicing. So that does look like maybe he may be suspended for a quarter or something like that. I mean, the guy, yeah. you know. Get, he defended I mean, his home. Yeah, you know, the guy defended his home. He doesn't have a track record of being right. in trouble or he's a good kid. doing anything. Really great kid. So hopefully Josh Hypo will look into that and, and, and make a good decision on him. But like I said, it, it's something different in the air right now. Um, I'm very confident in my football program. I'm very confident as an alum. Uh, I think that presence of all the guys that beat up on Bama, beat up <laughs> on Florida, will be back in the building. Uh, that's one thing that I've yes. never saw in the last 10, 12 years of coming to UT games. Uh, that Florida game, man, we had over 50 former players just on the sideline hanging out and, you know, getting those guys fired up. And it's going to be crazy Electric. this weekend. You know, it's, it's guys coming back that haven't came back in the last 10, 12 years. Uh, you know, Peyton will be back. I know people don't want to hear that with the Peyton jinx and things <laughs> like that. But he's got to wear Eli's disguise. <laughs> yeah. Like we got to have him somewhere else. Back, you know, <laughs> so hopefully, you know, we don't have to the the, the jinx will come to the you know come to an end. But it's going to be very special. Very it will special. Be. The biggest game we like. I said this. This is the biggest game we've had in this city in over twenty years. And if you're not there, I feel sorry for you, man. It's 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 too set up for us. Everything is is laid out for us, you know, undefeated. When was I mean, it 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 feels funny even saying five and oh, you know. I know it feels funny saying five and oh because like I was telling my son, man, a couple years ago we were still, you know, me being from Atlanta, Georgia, coming home. After we lost to Georgia State, I didn't even feel right putting on my orange hat. <laughs> walking, you know, walking yeah. through the city of Atlanta. It was like, man, hey, Georgia State beat, uh, Georgia State beat y'all, man. Y'all trash, blah, blah, blah. And you're like. So, you know, not too long ago, we were hitting rock bottom. And, yes. and just like this, we're a top 10 football team. You know, it is unbelievable what this coaching staff and what these players have done with all of the. Uh, you know the 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 emotions and the the downs that they, they, that they've went through. Man, I was talking to right. Trail Bumpus uh, a couple of days ago. He said that he has played through like six position coaches. Six positions. Wow! Like, can you imagine working for that many? You know, as even as an employer or mm -mm. whatever you're doing, can you imagine working for that many people with all those different personalities? And I'll, you know, playing with Butch, he, he came in with Butch, then played with Pruitt, uh, not dealing with you know Coach Heupel and all these other people. Right. And that guy stayed and fought through the pain, man. He didn't hit, he didn't go through the portal. You know, Trayvon Flowers, it's a lot of seniors on this team that need to be rewarded with this victory just yeah, on the I sacrifices agree. that they made to just to you know stay through the adversity. And trust the process, right. man. And now they're reaping the rewards of being able to say that I'm five and zero, oh, while everybody else left ship and they're struggling right now. Can you imagine being those guys that play for Oklahoma? Oklahoma. I was they're just about with. to say Eric Gray, so, yeah, and Eric Gray, and all those guys, man. Mm -hmm. And they looking at here like, damn, 
If I should, you know, Henry told, told. Yeah, I'm glad know? that he's coming back. Like, you're going to feel what this too, really so. is. Exactly. So it, it's it's just it's just all laid out for us this weekend. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. You're busy being Pablo, you know, distributing <laughs> cigars all over Knoxville thank because you. we're going to be smoking them this weekend. Yes, but thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. So no everybody problem. make sure you guys, I have the ticker here on the bottom. Make sure you follow him. Um, follow the Gator Killer, Pablo Juice <laughs> Jabari Davis on Twitter. And then also go support the Legends of Tennessee. It's a really good cause and it's something that's phenomenal. And it's giving back to our community. So that's wonderful. Yeah, awesome. And uh, much love and respect to you. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> Thank you. Keep building your brand. and. Uh, Tip drill. I like that name. That was my Tip favorite drill. video back in the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a play on words, you know. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Go balls. Go balls.